This video is now in session, and uh, today Biden has passed the COVID-19 relief package, $1.9 trillion. So in this video, we're going to explain how that will affect Republicans in the 2022 election and what that will mean for the 2024 election. So for the 2022 election, um, we start off with the normal map, but when we have... Um, when we have the COVID-19 bill passed by the president, then it's more likely to help Democrats than uh, help Republicans. There's a, uh, there's around a 75% approval of the bill, which is a large percentage over the 25% that disapprove of the bill. So um, for a lot of, uh, I guess, swing states, especially in the Rust Belt area, that could be impactful for Democrats and help them get over the top um, even if they lose some Senate seats, even if they lose New Hampshire Senate seats. Um, and New Hampshire Senate seat, I'm going to talk about that in a different video along with the Ohio Senate seat because both of them are pretty in uh, interesting to uh, look at. But um, if, uh, but for the rest of the, for I guess for the rest of the map, uh, we could see some changes at, or at least some movement for the very competitive states. So Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. Those states we could see a movement in. And in terms of the shift in, in t uh, of lean states and likely states, we could see um, Nevada sh uh, shift from lean to likely. Uh, but that's the very best that Catherine Cortez Master will be able to do. She is the incumbent senator from that state. And then uh, other, other, I guess, um, other Senate seats also may change in terms of the uh, the characterizations. Like Ohio changed from uh, likely to lean, especially if Tim Ryan is running. This is contingent on Tim Ryan running, and uh, there um, is an announcement pending by Tim Ryan to run for the 2022 U.S. Senate in Ohio. But we believe that. Um, if Democrats want to have a chance of winning in the state, then they need someone that's close to Sherrod Brown, and um, Tim, Tim Ryan at this current stage is the closest to Sherrod Brown. Sherrod Brown is the other senator from Ohio. He is a Democrat, and he was able to win in his re-election in 2018 by the same margin or close to the same margin as Donald Trump. So, um, yeah, Democrats need a can uh, candidates like him in order to win in Ohio federal elections. Now, there is also an impasse as to whether they really need someone like Sherrod Brown or if they need uh, uh, someone of color who can be more like Barack Obama. Um, but I'll explain that in uh, in a separate video for Ohio. So uh, Ohio currently would be lean under the um, COVID-19 passage. And then we have these four states right here. For Georgia, I expect it to be either lean or tilt. Um, and then Wisconsin and North Carolina, uh, I'd put both of them as tilt still. Um, if Roger, if Ron Johnson though does retire, then I would change it from toss up to uh, tilt for Democrats. So this is the map that we currently have. It's uh, it's not really that much change uh, because there still needs to be um, I guess more polls taken after the. Um, COVID-19 bill uh, passed, and we also have to account for the fact that it's very early in the election cycle. It's 2021, we're one and a half years away from the midterms, so um, yeah, it's it's hard to say. Uh, but for uh, but Wisconsin and North Carolina, this is definitely a state where uh, the uh, these are definitely states where. Um, where Democrats could champion their COVID-19 package, especially in Wisconsin to white working class voters and, um, and the, uh, and, uh, the low income neighborhoods as uh, the, uh, the disenfranchised areas of Wisconsin, uh, Democrats could definitely shore up support there. And then for North Carolina, they can, uh, try to get the black vote out here, uh, to go for them and then also use uh, the suburban areas of Mecklenburg County and the um, the Triangle area, the Triangle Research area, which encompasses Durham, Raleigh, and uh, Chapel Hill, in order to get voters to go for them. Um, but for North Carolina, I already explained a video as to what Democrats should do and what Republicans should do to keep North Carolina. Now, in terms of other states, Georgia, Georgia, I'd say that um, not much would change from the COVID-19 um, uh, relief bill because the people who are on, I, 
I guess, yeah, the people who are on the fence about it are, like, our um, swing voters that uh, swung for Joe Biden in, in 2020. Those are the voters that Democrats will most likely keep um, for another two years. That said, um, I don't expect anyone, any other demographic to change for Democrats, especially, I mean, even if there was, then there is a possibility where Georgia's voter, um, voting bill that is being passed in the state house and the state senate, which is restricting voting for people of color, could deter black voters who vote for Democratic candidates, um, and as a result, any kind of growth in other communities would be counteracted by that, uh, by, by that proposition. So, Georgia is just gonna stay as like, uh, uh, tilt. For Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, um, this could actually be really useful for Democrats. John Fetterman currently is the front runner in the Pennsylvania Senate race, and, uh, we'd expect him to win the Democratic primary because of his popularity, but, um, he can he can use that uh, COVID nineteen as a reason to vote for Democrats in twenty twenty two rather than Republicans, um, and then for Arizona and Nevada, uh, for both of these states, um, for both of these states, we don't expect much change in terms of the uh, in, in terms of the shift from lean to likely. Nevada is the only case where we could potentially see that, um, and then for Colorado, Colorado. Uh, we would still see it as likely just because of it, uh, just because it's a midterm year. If it was a presidential uh, election year, then we'd uh, rate this as safe. Um, and then finally, we have New Hampshire. New Hampshire, it's interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting because um, it might help Maggie Hassan, but it's not. It's not enough by itself to counteract um, the growth if. Chris Sununu runs for the New Hampshire race for uh, as challenger. Um, there was a poll that was released a few days ago that showed Chris Sununu ahead by seven percentage points, around forty-one to forty-seven. So that's six percentage points. Um, and then there are, uh, yeah. The, and then at the same time, there are twelve people who, are, twelve percent of people who are undecided, which is a large amount and could definitely shift the election, but. Uh, the fact that Chris Sununu is already leading ahead of Maggie Hassan, and the fact that Maggie Hassan is not even close to uh, 50% is not good for her. So um, if Chris Sununu runs, uh, which I'd expect him to, then this will, uh, will most definitely become the most expensive race in Senate history. Now shifting over to the presidency and to the 2024 election, we could see the um, these states, if Joe Biden runs for re-election, we can see these three states being cemented uh, more for Biden just because of the uh, attraction he'll get from white working class voters in, um, in the Detroit area, the disenfranchised voters, and then, um, and then in the... Uh, and like the smaller towns, uh, like Grand Rapids, Flint, and the surrounding counties. For Wisconsin, uh, we could see more support come from Milwaukee in this area, as well as other places in in uh, in overall Wisconsin. In Pennsylvania, we could see Biden retain the suburbs of Philadelphia and as well as Erie County to get the win in Pennsylvania in 2024 because COVID-19. Uh, the infrastructure bill will still be uh, not the infrastructure bill the relief package will still be a big um talking point that said um especially if donald trump does uh, does win the republican nomination that said joe biden will uh, definitely need more than that um will uh, we'll need more than that by the time 2024 comes because the american people the american public has a tendency to forget um forget big things uh now, there are some things that I do not think they will forget, or the American people we would forget, but um, COVID-19 will definitely, in 2024, become less of an issue, and as a result, it might not be focused as much in terms of Biden's achievements in that regard. Um, for other states, for Texas, we could see Texas through COVID-19, and as well as through other uh, other bills by Joe Biden, uh, we could see Texas... Uh, potentially flip blue, but more likely to tilt a Republican to, um, for Joe Biden to shave off.
the Republican advantage in Texas because of the Rio Grande rally and then because of the suburbs. Since, um, well, not the suburbs, more, more rather the disenfranchised, uh, individuals in the, um, in the Houston area and then as well as, uh, the Dallas Fort Worth area. So for these, I guess, uh, for these kinds of communities, they would, de- uh, they would benefit the most from, uh, Biden's deal. And Biden has shifted to a stance that's more progressive, but helps, um, but aids, I guess, poor, uh, poorer people in the United States, aids the disenfranchised and those who don't have as much opportunities because of the income. Uh, at this point, that's what, uh, who Joe Biden is advocating for in his presidency. And that would, um, that would help in communities that match that prospect. And if we look at it, um, and that's mainly like the Rio Grande Valley and again, like the urban counties with more, uh, disen- uh, disenfranchised voters. And if we can see here, um, they, uh, this area already shifted it for Democrats, but this area shifted Republican in 2020. So in 2024, if, um, 2024, uh, Joe Biden could use the, uh, could appeal to the Latino vote through these kinds of, uh, through these kinds of actions that have benefited Americans. And then if we look at Florida, Florida is a state that went for more for Republicans in 2020 than in 2016. And that's because of the, my, that's because of Miami Dade County. So, um, for that reason, we'd expect, uh, we, we'd expect it, Florida to start off, uh, as Republican. Uh, but at the same time, again, uh, Joe Biden could appeal to the Cuban American vote that he wasn't able to in 2020. Now, the Cuban American vote in Miami Dade County, it went towards Hillary Clinton in 2016, but it didn't for, uh, Joe Biden in 2020. Using COVID-19 and using other, um, progressive bills that help Americans are, and are generally popular with them will definitely help uh, him get back the Cuban American vote in Miami Dade County, because if there's one thing that, uh, if there's one thing that frightens Cuban Americans, uh, it's definitely progressivism and as well as socialism. Uh, Donald Trump was able to, um, I guess, uh, not, uh, uh, partly fear monger, uh, partly fear monger voters to, uh, to vote for him, but, um, it's like the Hillary Clinton situation where Hillary Clinton said, if you vote for Donald Trump, then America is going to suffer. America is going to be n- not the number one country anymore. So as a result, many people voted for her. And then we looked at Donald Trump's presidency. And while there was a lot of chaotic moments, it ultimately did not destroy America. Um, and that's not, uh, that's not subjectively saying it. That's objectively. So, uh, as a result, a lot of voters looked to that and looked to what Hillary Clinton said and saw that the Democratic Party would, might have just been playing BS. Um, and then they voted for Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump also did say that if Joe Biden was elected, then America would be destroyed. So it could also, it, it could be deja vu, but for the Republicans this time in 2024, when they realize, when voters realize that Joe Biden, even if he has progressive policies, it's ultimately still helping Americans, um, and still popular with Americans. So so that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This video is now adjourned and we'll see you in the next one.